Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Allie's Corner. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about The Covenant. Um, one of the earlier roles that Sebastian Stan held um, as Chase Collins. So, I know it's a cheesy movie. <laughs> I know a lot of us, like I personally enjoy the movie The Covenant because it's kind of that witchy spooky vibe, especially this time of year. Um, it also um, is reminiscent of where I grew up. Um, it's got some of the lore of where I grew up. So if you are from or like the Salem Witch Trials and like talking about what ultimately happened during that time and not necessarily factual, but even some of the spookier shit, um, this might, you might enjoy some of this, um, and might enjoy this movie, but it's also the movie that Sebastian cringes about, um, when he does it, he was also in his early twenties when he did this movie, but Chase as an like character is a really good fleshed out character, even though the lines in this movie can be cheesy as hell. Um, so let's get into it. Uh, when we first meet Chase, uh, we meet him at the bonfire. Um, and he's the new kid, right? So that's when we get to see him in all of his glory first. Um, we don't really know much about him. He's there, he gets introduced um, to Sarah by Kate. Uh, and he's like, that's the new kid. And then Aaron is being kind of a dick to the um, Sons of Ipswich, which Kate introduces Sarah to and says they're the Sons of Ipswich and explains that they come from like a witchy coven type deal. Um, and she, Kate is dating Pogue. So when you have all this explaining, Aaron is kind of being a dick to everybody. Um, Aaron then... Aaron's one of Aaron's friends who's being a dick kind of throws up everywhere. We don't know what's going on at this point in the movie. Um, we see Chase as being just the new kid. Um, we don't know what his connection is and all of this stuff. Then we go in and we see the girls, uh, Kate and Sarah, with Chase um, at the store in town away from the school. Um, getting some supplies. Caleb shows up, asks Kate if she wants to go for a drive, and they do. Um, and they go to Kate or Caleb's home um, that he meets Gordon at. So we go through that whole process where it's very pretty, very fall-like, um, and we go through that process. And then Chase again, just pops up, glasses on, dorky new kid kind of that ordeal they were talking about going to see a movie kate and chase went to see the movie um since pogue didn't want to go see it and sarah and caleb went off uh then we go into nikki's uh which is the bar they all kind of go to in town and you have the Ipswich boys kind of betting um back and forth on what they're you know they're doing pool with aaron and the boys um they get into a fight uh and they win money Aaron's not very happy with it um but they're using their powers and we see this in the Sons of Ipswich because then Poe goes mm, bets he goes I bet you she doesn't have any underwear on uh he does this in the movie um this movie's also come out around 2005-2006 so in that era and then they use their powers to swipe up her skirt as an heir and then it's like mm, told you and then he won wins money um, at this point, Chase is there with them. He's also there with the girls and he's hanging out with the girls more than he's hanging out with the guys. Um, we go through that process, uh, and then they're at Nikki's. The other piece of it is when they're in the pool. Uh, so the pool scene where you have Caleb and Chase going, um, full throttle and they are like swimming like crazy full throttle and we see all this happening right and so Caleb and Chase are swimming to see who's the better swimmer um because they're both going through the same spot on the swim team um because you gotta remember Chase is a new kid at school and he had the same spot on his old team um after his parents had passed so Caleb notices Chase's eyes go completely black. Meaning Chase has the same power as the sons of it switch. Caleb realizes this. Caleb also gets to the wall and hits his head and goes down. Chase pulls him out of the pool and Tyler talks about how they saved him. 
Um, and then Nikki's and Sue's after. But right after that, and then they're in the locker room scene, Chase and Aaron have a scene together um, where Aaron tries to dominate Chase and, like, be the alpha male. And Chase is like, no, nah, not going to fucking happen. Uh, Aaron tries to choke Chase. And you can see the smirk that happens on Chase's face. Kind of laughs. Um, and then he hits Aaron, gets him down. And he's like, you don't have to worry about what's between your legs. Like, makes a joke about it. Um, it's very toxic. Very toxic masculine. High school masculine. Um, and kind of puts Aaron in his place to never fuck with him again. And that's when he asks if they want to hang out. And then Caleb's like, hey, we're going to Nikki's. And they go to Nikki's. Um, we're also going to jump back to the beginning because he's in the car with the girls when the girls' car wouldn't start. And then they fix the, like, one of the Sons of Ipswich fixes the car for them. And then they go. Um, they also find a dead kid. And you got to remember the four... Five of Sun Five of the Sons of Ipswich. Um they all hang out, they all grew up together, they all grew up in the same town, they all know what their powers are. Caleb is ascending, we've seen that. He's also starting to see signs of somebody else using it, and he blames the other members. Um he's talking to the other three going, yeah, because there's four of them. So he's talking to the other three going, hey what's going on why are you using and they're all like we're not using um and Caleb goes you know the closer I get to sending them more I can feel it and they're like yeah we can feel it too we've seen them um so at this point like once they're realizing we're not doing this and it's not us that's showing our power they're trying to figure it out so Pogue and Caleb break into the administration building and figure out what's happening. Um, Chase is telling you body language wise what's going on. Um, you can tell that he's like hiding. He's wearing jackets or he has like shirts and stuff that may be long sleeved. He's kind of hiding at what he's doing. Um, especially when we first see him, he has a really long sleeve coat on. Yes, it's cold out, but he's also wearing like a trench coat. <laughs> so he's trying to hide what he's doing. Um, he gets called into the principal's office or the headmaster's office because his ID was found in a dead kid's car. And he's like, well, I caught a ride over there and I don't know, like I thought I dropped it, you know, I lost it and I didn't know what happened. Um, so he plays it off like he's playing dumb. But Pogue and Caleb find out that who he's an actual descendant of, um, find out that his last name is actually, uh, comes from the Goody line. So, finds out he's an actual son of Ipswich and then he killed his parents in a car crash. And that's when all hell starts to ensue. Um, Chase starts to amp up the closer it gets to Caleb's ascension, right? So, it goes through and Caleb um, and Pogue are trying to stop him and figure out what's going on. So Chase is catching on to a lot of this and Chase is really keeping an eye on all of them. He's keeping an eye on them with spiders and doing all of that. Um, you also have a scene where Sarah is in after they come back, like if we go back to the beginning a little bit, she comes back from the bonfire. She goes and takes a shower and one of the lights break. As she's sitting there examining it, she feels like somebody's watching. Um, she's just in a towel. If you watch the fog in the background, it is Chase's face, dude. Like, it is Chase's face. So he has the power to be able to be there and watch and do whatever he wants and not being seen. Because um, then she runs into one of the sons after and asks him to look. And he's like, it looks like it's just a broken light. Um, when in actuality, it's not, <laughs> it's magic, uh, that's happening in this movie, but we get to the point where Kate is being bitten by a spider and then ends up in like the hospital and has to be transferred. And Sarah is now by herself. Um, and because, you know, Sarah and Caleb are talking, 
Pogue finds out that Kate is in the hospital and he's trying to go and see her or go and fix some stuff and Chase catches him while he's riding his uh, Ducati bike and flips him like and then he ends up in the hospital um so he's taken out Pogue he's taken out Kate um so people that Caleb and Sarah both care about and then he shows up at Sarah's dorm as Caleb and says Pogue has been in an accident um and then he puts her in a trance has a spider bite her um and then Caleb shows up and comes in and sees that Chase is there in his form and then Chase just kind of transforms and then this is where it kind of goes down. Um, this is towards the middle end of movie um, where Chase explains what is happening and yes I'm part of the Sons of Ipswich and you guys never knew and when I met my old man because I didn't know who he was because I was adopted he goes I made him will his power to me and now I'm going to expect you to do the same thing um, and then he throws him and Caleb get into a fight and he throws Caleb into the medicine cabinet. He's like, I've been addicted. I can't help but using. Um, and it, they talk about it like it's an addiction, um, like any other addiction. And he calls him brother and he kisses him on the lips. Um, so his body language is like, he's just skeeving f to be able to use more um, and more of that power. And he's just wanting it like it's an actual addiction to any other substance. Um, no, and Caleb's like, it's going to break down your body and it's going to make you not be who you are and you're going to age faster. And he's like, no, we're good. The more power I have, nobody's had this much power before. It's not going to do that. And he's like, yes, it is. And he's like, no, not going to happen. Not going to do that. Um, and then he's like, you're on your ascension night. You're going to will your power to me because it's the night of the dance. And he's like, we're going to meet at the old Putnam barn. Um, Otherwise she gets it and like he's threatening her, him, Caleb, with Sarah. Um, but he's been doing this in the entire movie because there's been foreshadowing up to this all this point. You've got to watch the way that he dresses and the way that he talks and the way that his body language is moving because he's communicating. It's just very subtle communication that most people don't actually catch up on. Um, and then we get to the dance. Sarah is dressed. She's with the rest of the Ipswich boys because um, Pogue is still in the hospital. And then Caleb is going to take her. Um, Caleb's mom, who's considered a drunk, is, you know, like, oh, you're so handsome and talks about, you know, his dad and all of this stuff. And then they go, they're like, hey, we're going to take Sarah to the dance. And Pope's, or Caleb's like, I'll meet you there. Um, they get Sarah to the dance. The clock strikes. Sarah disappears. They can't find her. And Caleb knows exactly what's going on. So Caleb ends up going out to the Putnam barn um, and is met by Chase. <laughs> so Caleb and Chase have this battle that goes on. Um, and Chase like physically um, communicates with throwing like spells at Caleb and Caleb throws spells back at him. Uh, Chase also tells him he's going to make him his weach, which is like one of the cheesiest lines in this movie. Um, which every time I hear it, I crack up laughing because it is so cheesy. Um, but it's one of like my favorite lines too, because it's just that cheesy that it's like funny cheesy, um, which is amazing. But they battle and they ensue and the barn catches fire and they're at the Putnam barn and Caleb's mom goes to his dad and goes, Hey, <laughs> will your son your power? Um, and he does it. And Caleb gets more power and takes Chase's power ball that he threw at him. Cause that's the only way that I can explain. It's like an energy ball Threw an energy ball at him. Caleb takes it and throws his energy into it at the time of like Ascension and, or at the time that he got his power from his dad and then threw it back at, um, Chase and Chase kind of gets zapped into this wormhole thing and disappears. Uh, nobody knows what happens. The Putnam Barn burns down. They save Sarah. And it's kind of the end of it. You don't really hear much after Chase was kind of all talk. Um, and then it ends there. It would have been really nice to see a sequel to this movie. To see if Chase comes back. Um, 
but that character is really good and really fleshed out. Sebastian plays really good like evil characters and not necessarily inherently evil but characters that have had some tragedy or some trauma or something that happens to them and they go through and it changes. Um, he does it with Stephen Fresh. He does it with just a lot of like, like even characters in like Pam and Tommy um he does it really well like they're not inherently evil but they do things that may not be the best in the time that's happening um so like Sebastian is such a great actor that he can play a lot of these roles really well um he's got such a facetive role like Lance Tucker <laughs> he's an asshole uh that movie love that movie um but that character is an asshole and he plays that asshole extremely well and Sebastian's a sweetheart in real life like he does a lot of for local like causes he works at the Ronald McDonald house he's done things for our big day out um he's done a lot and he's done a lot of amazing things but he plays like assholes and he plays evil people and he plays serial killers really well I would love to see him more in horror movies I think that would be really cool to see him in um and doing more maybe of a little bit of a different take on more horror um and seeing maybe more independent films as well um and maybe psychological thrillers to kind of see him in and see him take a different take and maybe see him uh be being in a movie that he has written um because his writing is really good as like pretty amazing as well um I would like to see different faceted assets um and not just in the producer assets so maybe director writer and starring in those roles as well like doing a little bit of a different take on what actually is happening um but yeah that's it I mean we just went through Chase Collins I mean Chase communicates very thoroughly too like in the movies um he's very vocal about a lot of things so he, he talks a big talk but he's also a high school kid that has a mouth on him just kind of runs it uh, <laughs> so there's that uh, but that's this week's episode um if you want to see other things let me know um we have our social medias and we also have uh comments on youtube um you can let us know and reach out to us you can even reach us through the email uh we're definitely able to go ahead and put you know look into the characters and things of that nature hope you all have a beautiful rest of your week and we'll see you next week